Right now it is time uh, for Arthur Schwartz, the food maven. Arthur gets together with us uh, every Monday at this time, and we talk about food. And, Arthur, something happened last week, which I don't know if this, as, as someone who who did a lot of reviews and, uh, and restaurant reviews and food reviews, uh, a local restaurant here, uh, the Woodland, uh, the owner, Rob Peters, passed away this last week. And the, the restaurant had been in the Peters family for, uh, I want to say, 30, 40 years. Um, and it's just one of those the things. Woodland, is yeah. that on uh, Lake? Um, right, in, right in between Lakeville and uh, right past Hotchis School. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's just remember. it's just one of those things when an owner and who's so connected to the community passes away like that. Uh-huh. You know, it's more it's it's more it was more than just a restaurant. So, uh, but anyway, I, did you ever have that feeling when something like that happened to you? And you know, a place you went to a lot and and ate, and and then the the owner passed away. And get that feeling at all? It happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get to a certain age. Yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a natural course of things. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the thing is, uh, the people I looked up to, the restaurateurs I really admired, um, most of them are long gone yeah. by now. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. This happened. I mean, I'm dr- I gotta say, I'm driving around. Uh, my own neighborhood yesterday, and uh, I can't tell you how many places have closed yeah. over the last year, how many for rent signs there are, and restaurants and other kinds of businesses, mainly restaurants, though, yeah. of course. Well, let's talk about other good news about food. I'm, I'm, I, I, I am now fully vaccinated, and I can't wait till the day when it's more or less safe to go to a restaurant. Uh, as much as I... I'm, I, I will be annoyed when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm totally into spring. I'm really pushing it, I know. But um, it, March, to me, spring starts with St. Joseph's Day, which is March 19th, and that is, after all, only 10 days away. Um, and I'm preparing already. Now, there are a lot of traditions in Italy associated with St. Joseph. Uh, one of them, the, probably the most famous, is to eat fried donuts called, in, in Sicily they're called sfinci. Um, in Naples they're zeppoli di San Giuseppe, um, a kind of zeppole. Uh, zeppole uh, is a generic word, actually. We, we, we think of it in the U.S., as uh, these little fried dough balls that we get at fairs and carnivals and whatever, uh, street food, uh, usually sprinkled with the powdered sugar. But zeppole could be, um, they can be savory too, actually. But zeppole de San Giuseppe is what in English we would call, uh, well, we would call a French crawler. That a French crawler, even a Dunkin' Donuts French crawler, is in essence a Sfinche or uh, San Giuseppe uh, Zeppelin. However, they're stuffed in Italy for San Giuseppe. Um, the, the Neapolitan one is stuffed with uh, a pastry cream and, the, and topped with a sour cherry, uh, amarena. And the one from Sicily called Sfinci is, is stuffed with ricotta cream, like cannoli cream, and probably also topped with a candy cherry. Uh, these are sour cherries, but they're sweet because they've been candied. So it's a, a wonderful flavor. And you can buy those in the U.S. And if you can't find uh, uh, Italian uh, sour cherries in a jar, um, uh, is it Tip Tree is the name of the there's a, uh, uh, the English uh, jam company uh, they make um, Morello cherries and those are the same thing anyway th- that's the most famous San Giuseppe however for me San Giuseppe is more about bean soup and especially bean soup with greens now <clears throat> let's start with the greens I said I'm pushing it spring, it's only the beginning of March. However, I've already spotted 
the first crocuses in my neighborhood, and there is a clump of daffodils that always comes up early that is up already. Uh, and this, by the way, emerged from the snow. And uh, I think that it's spring already. And there is a weeping willow tree in my neighborhood, a magnificent, enormous tree. And as you all know, uh, we, the willows are the first thing to green up and the last thing to lose their leaves. And the one, this magnificent one in, in a community garden here is starting to green up. So this always makes me think of being in Cornwall, going out to my, I was not a lawn, it was what I called the short green growth, and uh, a picking uh, the youngest possible dandelion and chicory right out of my short green growth, and a big expanse of <laughs> short green growth. So um, and that is maybe the biggest treat of the spring. These are these leaves of chicory uh, and dandelion. By the way, they're related. Uh, in fact, I think chicory is in fact a kind of dandelion. It's something like that. By the way, in the I don't know what in, in the north, but in the south of Italy, you never see yellow dandelions, but you see plenty of blue chicory. So chicory, wild chicory, is a thing, and it is actually a thing for St. Joseph's Day in, in Puglia. Puglia is, let's see, Puglia is the heel, the stiletto heel of the, of the boot that is Italy, the shape of Italy is the boot. And it's the, it's the heel and the stiletto part of the boot. And in that region of Italy, which, by the way, it may, it has superb and plentiful olive oil, I think it actually has the largest production of olive oil in Italy is from Puglia. But, but as somebody once in Puglia once said to me, we make the best and we make the worst. So, I mean, they even produce oil for making soap and things like that, but also the finest uh, uh, edible oil. Uh, what do I say? Kitchen oil. Kitchen oil. Table oil. <laughs> <laughs> Extra virgin olive oil. Um, anyway, in Puglia, for St. Joseph's Day, uh, they make uh, maku. M-A-C-C-U is the word. Maku is a generic word for bean soup. But at, at this time of the year, everybody in Puglia knows it's time to use up all the dried beans that uh, you have from the winter. Because although beans do store very, very well, they're not so good after a year on the shelf. And the harvest is going to be, you know, coming up in a couple months, and it's time to use up those beans. So, in fact, for St. Joseph's Day, there's a traditional maku that uses up every bean in in the larder. For this recipe, I would buy. I, I wouldn't, you know, years ago, and I think even in my Southern Italian book, uh, the Southern Italian Table, uh, there is a recipe for maku di San Giuseppe because I love it so much. Um, and I think I put a, a whole bag of mixed beans and then uh, like a lot of, a little bit of this, a little bit of that beans. But you don't have to do that. You can just buy the, they, they, every supermarket these days carries uh, a bag, several brands I know of, of, of mixed beans. Could be like 10 different beans in the bag. That's good. The more beans in the bag, the better. And, and you boil your beans. Um, as you would boil beans uh, in a lot of water and uh, you add uh, I do anyway because uh, it uh, makes for better flavor uh, uh, some diced carrot onion and celery usual and uh, and you simmer it for you know until the beans start falling apart and and then you beat in some olive oil of course the best olive oil that you have and you top this well, I shouldn't say top it. In this case, not top. Uh, you, you stir in uh, at the end, after the soup is really nice, you stir in the greens that you've, from. well, in, if you were making this in Puglia, you'd go to the market and you'd buy a big bunch of, of wild chicory and, um, and perhaps wild fennel 
And by the way, you might also have in your larder some dried chestnuts, and that you can throw in there too with, with the beans because they take a while to, to, to get soft and cook uh, and then eventually, hopefully, fall apart. And then you put in your greens. Now, I mean, when I was making this years ago and I couldn't buy uh, the right greens, I would put in spinach, which works very well. I mean, you could just, at the very end, throw in several handfuls, if not a lot, of uh, even that baby spinach from the supermarket works very well here. But actually, I'm going to take a sip of coffee, excuse me. No problem. <laughs> I needed that. Um, the other, the, by the way, so uh, these greens, to me, are what spring is about. And the one that I'm cooking a lot of, and I, I guess I'm going to still cook it, and not cook it because it's good raw, is endive. Uh, or as some people say, endive. <laughs> and, I th- and I used to say endive, and I'm trying to train myself to say endive. doesn't sound as pretentious, obviously. But it, the reason it was endive is because it was Belgian endive. And in fact... Um, France and Belgium are still the biggest growers of this particular kind of chicory. They're all in the same. A lot of a lot of these spring greens that I, as I think of them, are in the same family: dandelion, chicory. Um, now, escarole we can buy all winter long here, and I know that at, at least in in Naples and Salerno, escarole is a winter green, but in fact. The tender young endive, I mean, not, uh, not endive, escarole, is, 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 is wonderful, and that's what you can get now. There are other kinds, like frise, um, it has a French name, is a curly endive. Um, they're all related. Oh, and the one that I love so much that I only know one place in Brooklyn to buy is called Puntarelle, P U N T, I think it's E R. Well, maybe P U N T A R E L L E, plural word. Punterelle is also known as Catalonia, and it's another kind of chicory. And it is a Roman, it is particular to Rome. Uh, I, I've had it in the South um, as well. I mean, I always say Rome is the first, is, is the entry to the South. And uh, you, they make it in Rome and they make it. Uh, in other places in the south, a salad of puntarelle. And this uh, uh, Catalonian type uh, uh, endive is, has a green leaf that you don't eat. It has a, a long white stem and it clusters at the bottom. <coughs> if you go to a m- market in Rome, you're likely not even to see the whole head of Catalonia. What you'll see are little strips of white uh, stem uh, floating in cold water because if you you cut them in like three inch, you you strip off the leaves and you cut everything white into uh, not julienne but you know let's say half inch wide, uh, uh, three inch long, four inch long strips, and then you put them in ice water and they curl up. And that's the way it's served. And of course, it's drained. And then the the, the classic, the traditional uh, dressing for this is um, anchovy mashed up uh, with a clove of garlic, oil, vinegar, and you probably don't need salt, but I always need pepper. But I put that on at the end. So you mash up your garlic and your anchovy together, and let's say for one clove of garlic and uh, two or three anchovy fillets, uh, you'll probably want at least a quarter of a cup of uh, good olive oil and the vinegar to taste. I don't usually use a lot of vinegar for this, but you know some palates may need the acid more than mine. Um, and you could use red wine vinegar or white wine vinegar or um, even cider vinegar is fine but I prefer wine vinegar for this, and uh, salt, and that's it, and that goes on your leaves. Now, without puntarelle, you can still make this with Belgian endive, endive. So, 
By the way, another name, and this is the actual Belgian name. You know, it's like there's so many things that like Russian salad is not called Russian salad in Russia. <laughs> it's called <laughs> salad olivier. So in, in Belgium, endive is called witloof. And I think, in fact, the Brits use that word also, W-I-T. W-I-T-L-O-O-F. I'm not sure how you pronounce it in, in Belgian, but it's Witloof. Something like that. In any case, um, you can use that instead of Puntarella. It's very similar. Uh, endive has a slightly bitter edge to it. And I say slightly um, because Mr. Harned who can't tolerate bitter, loves endive. So it can't be that bitter. To me, it's not really bitter, because I tolerate bitter. I like bitter. So if I was made, I make a number of different salads with, with endive, um, but this one maybe is my favorite. You know, oil, uh, vinegar, garlic, and anchovy. But uh, Harned likes oil, vinegar and Dijon mustard with um, a shallot minced into it. Uh, and I let it stand for a while, um, oil, vinegar, shallot, and mustard, because it, um, the shallot tastes better after it stands a little bit. Uh, garlic works well, too. You could do just a, a salad dressing with oil, vinegar, and garlic, minced garlic. I, I'm really getting off on endive <laughs> lately. I even now am roasting endive. Um, you split each head in half, put it in a baking dish. Um, I drizzle it with uh, olive oil, uh, not all that much, uh, but make sure you get it on the endive. It'll, it, eventually you will get around it too, around, uh, in, in the endive, and salt and pepper and stick it in a 425 degree oven. Doesn't take more than 15, 20 minutes. I do want the bottom leaves that are touching the pan to brown, but the top does not have to brown. Um, and then I, I like to eat it at room temperature. And another thing, if you want to embellish that, is once it gets to room temperature, you can wrap it in a piece of prosciutto. This is, by the way, very keto diet. But it's also delicious. And um, years ago, I mean, 25 years ago, I used to stuff endive, split them in half, take out the middle leaves, make this little stuffing with pine nuts and raisins, and breadcrumbs and, and oil, and then uh, uh, tie up these um, endive and braise them. Now, this was all because I didn't want to make the more traditional escarole um, done this way, which requires uh, four hands, <laughs> two to hold the escarole into a little bag with all this stuffing, and another pair to tie it up. So I decided, no, I'm going to do the endive. Well, in the end, and then I braised them in the oven. I must say they're very delicious, but they don't look that great. So I decided, oh, if I wrap them in prosciutto, <laughs> nobody will notice how they look, but they really will like the taste. So that's another thing that I do with endive. And by the way, escarole, which is closely related, uh, which I mentioned before, is, is actually a winter green in the south of Italy, scarola. I mean, I have to say that I have a friend who at age... 84, five maybe now, I have to think about that. She's no kid. Laura looks a minimum of 20 years younger than she is. And one day we were eating in a pizzeria, this is a long time ago, and she ordered a, a, a scarola calzone, which is nothing but, um, uh, you know, pizza dough folded over a stuffing of uh, basically, not even sautéed, but it's, it's heated in the oven. Escarole mixed with uh, some oil, anchovies, and I don't even think there was anything else in there. So garlic, probably. And uh, Laura 
uh, uh, took her knife and fork and cut open the calzone and ate only the escarole <laughs> inside. And I, I, I now know her very, very well, and I know that she often does this. Um, and she was just on a, 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 her scarola week because she needed to fit into an old dress, and, and she needed to lose a few pounds. But I must say that Southern Italians sometimes even attribute their longevity to their enormous uh, intake of scarola cooked in many different ways, including, this is a very famous American, Italian-American way, is something called wedding soup. Oh, yeah. You know wedding soup? Yes, wedding I do. Soup, wedding soup is escarole soup with little meatballs in it. And it's made with broth. And the reason it's called wedding soup is not because it's made for weddings. It's because the we- the wedding of the ingredients is so perfect. I, I, I always thought that <laughs> the, the... The marriage, I should say, the marriage of the ingredients. And, 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 and a, a poetic Neapolitan would say, you know, it's a marriage of the, the lean broth with the fatty meatballs and, and the healthy greens. And, and by the way... It's not called wedding soup. Um, uh, there is a soup called marriage soup, but it's it's not that one. It, it is, by the way, an escarole soup, but not but not the one with meatballs. The one with meatballs is usually called zuppa di sante, mean healthy soup because it's got so many things in it. Oh, speaking of healthy, endive is very healthy, even though it's just this is white leafy thing. You think well. That's going to be mainly fiber. Well, it's healthy in that respect, too. It is a lot of fiber. It also is said to uh, make your... Uh, it's not a laxative, but it makes you regular. All right. Um, and the other thing that it has, and I think I have to warn people, it's extremely high in potassium. Now, aren't there some people who can't do potassium? Yeah. Like if you're on a blood thinner or something? Yeah. Yeah, this sounds familiar to me. Anyway, if you can find some good uh, chicory, and I find it in my markets, what what Italians call chicoria, wild chicory, although it's cultivated, <clears throat> you can make a very, very simple uh, uh, macu de San Giuseppe. Um, and I like doing this because it requires some exercise. You you boil up the the kind of fava bean you can you buy these in a, in a market uh, Greek markets carry them too and they're they're the dried yellow fava and they have no skins either so it's it you you soak them and then you boil them in just in water but as you as they get soft you start beating them with a wooden spoon this is the exercise part and you keep beating. The, the, the fava uh, as they disintegrate into the water. And by the way, you can keep adding water also. In the end, you want sort of the texture of mashed potatoes, and you're going to stir into it uh, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, salt, of course, pepper, of course. And that's your maku. And you top that with boiled chicoria, with boiled greens, and you put the boiled greens on top of the maku, on top of the, the boiled fava beans, and you top that <laughs> with a good amount, I mean a good amount of extra virgin olive oil and, of course, salt. And to me, that's the best way of celebrating St. Joseph's Day. Now, you know, you go back to the wedding soup. I'm the, I've never been a big veggie lover. Lately, I have been. I like I, I like, especially in in broths. I love I love green vegetables and broths. But when I was a kid, and I'll say up till I was about thirteen or fourteen, I I used to even back then I used to take the meatballs out of wedding soup because I just liked the I didn't they didn't look right in there, and also it, it seemed <laughs> to me it ruined the taste of 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 the rest of the soup. Isn't that strange? Well, who made this soup for you? Could maybe, maybe the meatballs were too big. They're supposed to be very tiny meatballs. I think that's what upset me. They were tiny and they were like little rocks. 
Well, okay. <laughs> I can understand not eating those. <laughs> I mean, it was like a 12-year-old totally. decided to make a meatball and just rolled up some meat real tight and, and cooked I, it. I yeah. got it. But yeah. who made those? Not I, your I, grandmother who was a no, good cook. No, it, it was at a restaurant. I forgot. Oh, I at forget a restaurant. Which restaurant. Okay. But it, it was years ago. That's okay. why I said I'm looking forward to going to a restaurant. But then again, I know I'm going to get annoyed when I get there. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, anyway, but I am I am going to make endive again today. I'm really, first of all, besides that it's it, it really tastes good. It's so easy to to do this so many different ways. And fennel is the same for me. I think I could write a whole book these days on how to cook fennel, um, because uh, by the way, it's not exactly fennel season. Um, I uh, but. There's, there's wonderful fennel around. I don't know, you know, as as a globovore, uh, somebody who will eat anything in season anywhere. Um, uh, there's someplace fennel is in season <laughs> because last week I bought incredible fennel, a cheap. So usually my my indicator of something being in high season is the price goes down. I, I I I like endive. I like endive. Endive you can have a lot of different ways, and you can put a yeah, lot of different yeah, things. Yeah, and also it. you know it looks expensive, but it's not really. Um, I I was paying three ninety nine a pound, and you get four nice size uh, heads. We call them of endive for uh, three ninety nine. That's a dollar a head. It's not crazy. Uh, truthfully, most people would only eat one head, two halves roasted. Uh, uh, certainly, two heads is enough to make a little salad, a side salad, uh, for something. Um, if you're eating it as uh, like you would puntarelle with anchovy and garlic, you can't eat that much either. So, and then, by the way, in that case, I do cut cut them vertically, but for most salads, I, I just cut it across. And I even. I know there are people who cut out the core, but why would you do that? When you get down to the bottom where you can't separate out leaves, um, you can just slice it thin. Do you remember the days, I know you're old enough, when you went to uh, parties and they served things in endive leaves? Yeah, well, yes, absolutely. Yeah, that, that was, I think, most people's experience with endive was that they got a little kind of steak touch, uh, some kind of tar fish tartare in an endive leaf. Well, I'm here to testify that endive leaves are an excellent <laughs> go-to with various dips and spreads when you're not eating bread. An endive leaf does a, a good job in baba ganoush. <laughs> I, ma I used to make an endive bacon, lettuce, and tomato, but without the the, the lettuce was endive, and I, I would oh. put bacon and tomato in it, and then oh yes, oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> and eliminate, eliminate the bread. Oh yes, I, I you know because I'm on this stupid diet, um, which I'm I'm sort of on the verge of giving up, but we'll see. Um, I'm scared to give it up. I'm scared to continue it. Anyway. Point. It's all my numbers. My doctor says is so good. <laughs> anyway, point is, uh, I'm not eating bread, and I'm eating a lot of endive. I wasn't going to say that at all, but um, yeah. So, well, I agree with you 100. percent See, <laughs> and, and you and you know who really got me interested in endive is Jill. Jill. So really? I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Why I, is she interested in it? She liked it, and I she she would get it at a restaurant a lot. And I oh, look at, oh, okay. And finally, I taste it, and I said, "Wow, you know, this is really good." <laughs> it's a very nice green. I yeah. was saying it was three dollars three ninety nine for for four heads. Oh, I, I know what I wanted to say. When you're picking endive from the, at the market, dig down because it stays white because it's grown in the dark, and it doesn't get a chance to get chlorophyll and you don't want outside green leaves that means that it was exposed to light too long i mean the tips of the leaves can be a little green that's okay but usually the, the, the it's it's a precious commodity and it comes in packed in boxes with paper between the layers so if you see it that way in your market pick up a layer of paper and 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 dig down under the paper uh for your for your endive or on Eve. All right. All right, Arthur. All right. Well, uh, have a great week, everybody. Spring is about to sprung. We change the clocks next weekend. 
It's an exciting time of year. It's very exciting, yeah. you know. It is very exciting. All right. Well, I'll speak to you next week. Take care. Take care, Arthur. Arthur Schwartz, the food maven here on Robin Hood Radio, available, of course, at RobinHoodRadio.com. Click on Arthur Schwartz, the food maven. Underwriting support for Arthur Schwartz, the food maven, John Andrews Restaurant on the Hillsdale Road in South Egremont, 413-528-3467, and on the web, jarestaurant.com. Rubiner's Cheesemongers and Grocers on Main Street in Great Barrington, 413-528-0488, rubiner's.com. Hillsdale Home Chef, more information, 518-325-7000, hgshomechef.com. 